Let's start with looking at the range. Here's our old friendly piece of data, which is a group of ages of a further maths class. And we've been playing with this data in this tutorial, so I'm going to continue the theme with looking at the range. Now, the range is talking about the lowest data point in the series or in your um, sample in the data that you have all the way up to the highest point and finding out how much is in between. What is this distance here? And the way we figure that out is to say the highest number in the series minus the lowest number in the series, which tells us how far spread out these two variables are at the either extreme. So to find that, we're going to need to have the data in order. So we put these in order from lowest number to highest number first, which looks a little something like this. And now we know what the minimum value is, the lowest one in the set, and we know what the maximum value is, the largest one in our set. So now we can say the maximum minus the minimum is 4. And now we know that the range of this data how far it spreads out from the very bottom to the very top, it goes a distance of 4, if you like, because the youngest person we have is 16 and the oldest person we have is 20. So there's only four years of range across this data. If we had a one-year-old and a 100-year-old, we'd have a much bigger um, range of data that we would be looking at. But this is fairly small because we're only looking at four different age ranges, four years of age range. The range is quite a good measure, usually, of how spread out the data is. But what happens if we have a set of data that looks like this? If we were to figure out the range of this data here, we've got some data that's all in single figures, and then one out here that is seriously blown out at 78. What we would need to say to figure out the range of this data is 78 minus 1, which gives us a range of 77 which probably isn't a really good um, idea of how spread out this data is because this point here is likely to be an outlier. And an outlier is some sort of anomaly. It doesn't really fit in with the pattern of the rest of the data. Now this could be a typo. It might be the person who was entering the data accidentally hit seven or eight, uh, 78 instead of one or either of those, or it could be a freak of the measurement, something like that. Maybe it is a real data piece, but it's more likely that this is some sort of accident that ended up in the data by mistake. And so an outlier is something that tends to screw up the rest of our summary statistics because it'll give us answers like this for the range. And we have a few ways of overcoming things, um, some of the, the shonky stuff that outliers can do to what we're trying to work out to our statistics. And one of the things we can do in terms of a measure of spread that isn't going to be affected by these hinky outliers is to measure the interquartile range, which is also known as the IQR, interquartile range. And what this does as a measure of spread, it only looks at the middle 50% of the data. So what we're going to do is break the data up into four quarters, four quartiles, and that's where we get the name of it from. So we're going to break it up into these, into halfway in the middle, and then another two points so that we get four chunks, one, two, three, four. And instead of measuring the range from the top of the data down to the bottom of the data, we're just going to measure the range from this point down to this point and just look at this middle 50% in here. Because then if there's any outliers way out low, like um, you know something down here that was a very low number and all of the rest of them were high, this won't affect the rest of this chunk in the middle. And if there was an outlier up here that was really high, such as this 78, then that won't pull it in that direction either. So we just look at this middle 50%, the range there. And so the way we do that, we already know how to find the middle of the data, don't we? That is the median. So the first step is to find the median, and then we're going to sort of find other little medians inside these chunks. So to find the median, we need to count our way into the middle, don't we? So we cross off 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. There we go. That's the median. 
Now what we do is we draw ourselves a little dotted line either side of the median and we say here's my new data set for each side of this. Now I want to find the median either side. So what I'm going to do here is say well it's not that one, it's not that one, it's not that one, it's not that one. It's halfway between these two points. I'm just finding the median of 1, 3, 4, 6. If that was all of my data, how would I find the median? I'd go one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. It's halfway between these two. Halfway between 3 and 4 is 3 and a half. Now I do it as though my data is just 7, 8, 8, 78. One from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. Halfway between 8 and 8 is just 8. So that's finding my way into the middle here. And there's my middle section there, which is halfway between these two, which is 8. So what I've done, and I'm just going to get rid of some of these scribbles on the screen. What I've done is broken my data up into four quarters. Here's a quarter of it. Here's a quarter of it. Here's a quarter of it. And here's a quarter of it. And I've got it into four even chunks. Now I've got my four quartiles. And this one we call quartile one, this point here. The median is quartile two, but we'll just call it the median for now. If this is number one and this is number two, this one is going to be number three. And to find the interquartile range, the IQR, what we do is we say Q3 minus Q1. So that's this sort of upper median, if you like, minus this lower median, if that's what you want to call it. It's the third quartile point minus the first quartile point, and that gives us this range of just the middle 50% of the data, not being affected by outliers on either side. So we say 8 over here is this Q3 minus 3.5. is 4.5 and that is the IQR, the interquartile range. So let's find the IQR for this data set which we've been using in this tutorial. Remember the first step is to find the median, so let's do that. 1, 2, 3 from the bottom, 1, 2, 3 from the top, 1, 2 from the bottom, 1, 2 from the top, 1 from the bottom, 1 from the top. I've reached a middle here and it's going to be between these two points. So my median is here and it's 17. Now I look at all of the data this side of the median and all of the data this side of the median. When it was a number that we hit in the middle because we had an odd number of data points, we ignored that number and we looked to the left of it and to the right of it. When it's a line like this, because we're looking um, halfway between two data points, these data points get included in what we're looking at to the left and what we're looking at to the right. So this is going to be one of the ones that I count in this next step. So now I'm finding Q1, which is the median of this bit between here and here. So one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. Here we go. That's going to be my Q1. Now I find the median of this data set here. Everything from the median towards the right up to the top. So one from the bottom, one from the top. One from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. Here we go. This is my Q3. So now I know the median is 17, the Q3 is 18, and the Q1 is 17. I can find the interquartile range. It's Q3 minus Q1, which is 18 minus 17, which is 1. What about finding the range and the interquartile range from a stem and leaf plot? Well, it works in very much the same way as from a list. The range is just the highest uh, value minus the lowest, isn't it? Minus the lowest. So in this stem and leaf plot, what's the highest value? Well, it's 54. And what's the lowest? Well, it's 0, 3, so it's 3. So the range is going to be 54 minus 3, which is 51. What about the interquartile range? Well, we need to do a little bit more calculation to work that out, but it's much the same as with a list. 
The first step is to find the median. So we count from upwards from the bottom and downwards from the top until we get to the middle. One, two, three from the bottom. One, two, three from the top. One, two from the bottom. One, two from the top. One, two, three, four from the bottom. One, two, three, four from the top. One from the bottom. One from the top. One from the bottom. One from the top. Here we are between these two data points. So I've got 18 and 24 and I want to find halfway between those two. So how do I do that? I add them together, 24 plus 18 divided by 2, which is 21. So my median is 21. But I don't really need to know the number exactly to figure out Q1 and Q3. It's just if I happen to need to know that for the question as well. But really what I need to know is that this line is where we split up our data. So now I've got everything down here being a new data set and everything up here being a new data set because there should be even numbers in each. And if you have a look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pieces of data up there and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pieces of data down here. So now I find the medians again for both of these data sets. So one from the bottom, one from the top, two from the bottom, two from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top. There we go. That's my Q1. Q1 is equal to 10. I do the same thing down here. One from the bottom, one from the top, 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 one from the bottom, one from the top. There we go. My Q3 is 32. And just be careful to watch out for when you're doing with this is this with a stem and leaf plot. When you're counting from the top, you go this number first, then that one, then this one, then out here, and then this one, and then this one. We go from right to left, which is a little counterintuitive, but if you think about it, this is the highest number, and that's the lowest number when our stem and leaf plot is in order. Coming up from here, we go left to right because they're in order, so that makes sense. But you just got to remember that you don't cross this one off before you cross this one off. So Q1 is 10, Q3 is 32. Interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, so it's 32 minus 10, which is 22.